hotter or even a little bit warmer. So it okay. all comes down to preference, honestly. But I will say, I think for a while there was this perspective that hot sake is bad sake or low quality sake. But the fact of the matter is like, pretty much all the sake coming out of Japan right now is really, really beautiful. And if you see the label like Junmai or Honjo on the label, you know that they're polishing to a certain level, which means that it's going to have some really beautiful characteristics that will shine whether hot or cold. So Julia, um, thank you for answering all those questions. And I'm so stoked about this cocktail and I might have enough prep for six of them, but since I'm by myself, I'm drinking all of them. However, um, I do know also you're doing some great work to help make it possible for bars in our state, in our region to be able to sell bottle cocktails, which I know like McLean is here from Denver and there are a lot of people from all over the country and the world. Can you tell us how we can help with your petition or in any way with those efforts? Yeah, thank you so much. So as you may or may not know, there are a lot of um, restaurants and bars who are doing takeout. And in Chicago, it was recently approved that we're allowed to sell uh, growlers to go, bottles of wine, spirits that typically we wouldn't be allowed to sell with the type of license that we have. Um, but what isn't allowed right now are pre-mixed beverages, so cocktails. So what I wouldn't be allowed to mix a cocktail, put it in a bottle, seal it, and sell it to you to go. But as a business owner, that's really where the best margins are, a way that we could make very valuable money that we could then put back into our business and support our employees with. And so I've been working with some really incredible uh, people in Chicago to try to reach out to the mayor and the governor and the state of Illinois to get them to make a temporary allowance in the law that would let us sell these cocktails to go. So I did start a petition. Uh, it's all linked through the at Bar Kuniko and the at Momose underscore Julia channels on Instagram where you can find the petition. But also, um, if you're in the area, look out for more posts from me as we are getting close, I think, to getting in touch with the right people and we're writing letters and we have phone calls. So just been in touch with the deputy mayor over just before this weekend started actually. So we're feeling really positive and excited. Um, but I know that this is something that would be incredibly helpful to so many in Chicago. So yeah. I appreciate all of your support and thank you for bringing attention to this, Belinda. Of course. So please sign that petition. We've sent links to everyone who's a part of this today. And also, if you're here in Chicago, please continue to support her store. How do we say it properly, Julia? Omochikaeri. Like that, that store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can order all throughout the week and then you pick up on Fridays between four and eight and continue to social distance, of course, but you can get great ice, great wines, hopefully at some point soon, great cocktails as well. So we're gonna toss it over to Amanda to tell us about our next guest because my water is boiling and I've got a cocktail now and I've got some wine now and I'm ready for my Easter brunch situation. Well, we're, we're ready uh, for Team Monteverde in the house. So we're excited to have Chef Sarah Gunneberg here with us today, as well as Rob Mosher from the restaurant. And Jamie is there too, I think, uh, in the background, helping Sarah too. But um, Monteverde is such a special restaurant. If you haven't been there, it's a must. Um, Sarah is a James Beard award-winning chef. Her team is welcoming, accommodating, they always make you feel special. Um, and we're excited to learn how to make this carbonara pasta dish, which is a very authentic um, Italian dish. But I'll let Sarah and Rob get into the details on the wine pairing. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Okay, can y'all hear me? We're switching cameras here. <laughs> They've got like a two camera setup with Jamie working in production at their place. So it's a very impressive thing. But we also, Amanda, have Rob Mosier here. Yeah. He's a speaker wine super duper aficionado who's going to give us some wine and carbonara tips. And I think some other members of the Monteverdi team are here too. And family. So we're excited. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just get us going here with the carbonara. And then I'm going to throw it over to Rob to talk about wine. I'm so ready. Your water boiling. Um, and pasta, you want to have a big boil, okay? Go ahead and get your two tablespoons of salt. Um, you can put a little less if you want. Um, you want to just be careful. Uh, you want your pasta water to be seasoned. Uh, and then I have some pasta here. Woo, close up. <laughs> so drop your pasta in. I realized that maybe some of you don't have scales. So I say six to eight ounces is good. So about a half a box is what we're going yeah, for so here. Like, I think and then 
Sarah, do you have like a brand that you really like? Or I mean, if it's just yes. the Bucatini shape, that's the right way to go. Well, yeah, so today I'm using spaghetti because I didn't have any Bucatini at home, shame on me. But um, I use uh, Mancini, which you can get from Italy and uh, on Amazon. And it's uh, from the Marche region. And it's the only pasta ficio in Italy that actually grows their own meat. So you can really know that the wheat is grown in a great way and isn't from like other areas that the soil might not be as healthful, healthful to eat. So that's why we choose that one. Um, but and there's all kinds. I like uh, Rusticella di Abruzzo. Um, even De Checo, I think, is a great, like, if you're just at the grocery store or supermarket, I would go De Checo over Barilla, but just, you know, as a preference. Sarah, for as an our people who have a gluten allergy, do you have any gluten-free pasta recommendations? Oh, the best one is called Caponi, and you can get that on Amazon also, yes. C-A-P-O-N-I. And then my friends at Viola Imports, um, which I could share their information after this, they um, have their their warehouse is open for people to go pick up stuff, which is incredible. I'm heading there yeah. next week, now that you reminded me. Oh, it's so good. Stuff up, yeah. Hey, Sarah, we were talking about that before when I saw you from six feet away yesterday. Yeah. There's a lot of um, producers and farmers like all over the country that are making stuff available that usually was only available to restaurateurs, but now is available to everyone, right? Yes, my dear friend at Mar uh, Marty Travis at Spence Farm is doing two to three drop-offs on Wednesdays. Uh, the one closest to the West Loop area is at Public and Quality Bread on Wednesday, and uh, we could circulate that email too. That would be great. That's where I get my eggs from, and that's why my eggs look so gorgeous. Look gorgeous. Um, these eggs are just really happy chickens. Um, I realized also these eggs are a little smaller. So six eggs for smaller eggs. And then I would say five if you have the large or the jumbo, you know, the extra large at home. So if you already have your egg yolks, it'll just be extra creamy, but you could back it off if you wanted to. Then I also have the Pecorino Romano. This is the king of Roman cheese, the king of Roman pasta. Um, so delicious. A little bit of ground one chali. So this is my like little trip trick that I add to this pasta to get the flavor of the guanciale to liquefy into the sauce. And then you should also have some crispies, some crispy little bits ready. No, I fire, <laughs> I like to cook extras because I always want to like nibble on a few crispy guanciales when I can. And uh, ground black yeah. pepper. Where did you get the guanciale from? Uh, from Ninja Artisans, which is now Tempesta. Yes. Uh, and that's made here in Chicago and available at Mariano's. Awesome. We don't have the guanciale. I was actually going to go buy Tempesta the other day to grab some in advance. Ah. No, I'll, I'll remember to do it. Yes, do it. And I think Italy has it too, but you can use pancetta or bacon for sure. Well, Sarah, 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 no that step that you have where you do both crispy guanciale and then the step where some of the guanciale is in the food processor, is that the traditional way or is that your kind of... No, that's the right? Chef Sarah extra little flavor action that I like to do. <laughs> Learn that from Patricia, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to throw it over to Rob because this class is cooking. So my recommendation is if your box says 10, 11 minutes, let's shoot for eight to nine. Uh, just take about two to three minutes off the, um, off of the cook time and I'll meet you back when we're ready. Yay. Hi, Rob. Hi, everyone. Happy to see Hi. everybody. And, uh, it's brunch. So I love that we have cocktails and we're going to talk about Chablis, but I've got a couple of other wines ready to go too, because I think uh, we're all in quarantine here and we all know that it's, uh, depending upon where you live, tough to get things, you know, trying to figure out what's at Italy, what's at Mariano's, if you're in an area that doesn't have, you know, as many different grocery options or something that doesn't have Instacart and then, you know, all of the difficulty with how often you should go to the store and whatnot. So I think this is definitely the time to be sort of digging around and seeing what you have uh, available and we'll talk about some different things that compare so hey rob um, let's back up for just one second because not everybody knows rob is a partner a managing partner in monteverde and also has an extremely amazing wine background he's worked for distributors and importers and all kinds of great stuff and he might have the most gorgeous wine cellar that i've ever seen uh so, <laughs> and library. whatever he whatever like he well. says listen to him. <laughs> I'm stocked. Uh, I didn't realize it, but I'm stocked for the quarantine with drinking. So if anybody needs some bottles, I've got uh, I've got plenty here. So I think you're right over. Covered on the uh, the booze side, and I'm covered on the wine side. So <laughs> good. 
So I chose uh, Chablis uh, to pair primarily because I love Chablis with everything. I always have you know a case or more of Chablis on hand because it's sort of my my daily drinking. I don't drink every day, but you know my uh, you know certainly have some Chablis every week. I would say because I think it just pairs so beautifully with everything. Um, in terms of beer, I like pilsners and things that are light and bright, something like Walsh, something that's just refreshing. And so I think that Chablis is a little bit of that to the wine world. Um, you know, I think that this is a really great producer. So this is Samuel Bio, is the name of the producer here. Um, what's fun about this is this used to be part of a bigger uh, family domain that's been around for a long time called Bio Simon. And that was actually purchased by a bigger estate called Domain Fedley, which makes lovely wines, but you know, just uh, is a little bit bigger size than what Bio Simon was. And so Samuel, who had been the winemaker of Bio Simon, wound up breaking off on his own and started making his own wines. And so he was able to keep some of the same vineyard sites and then also, uh, you know, has been in the, uh, in the Chablis region his entire life. And so he was able to work with a lot of great vineyards. So he's making really lovely wines. And what I love about these, I love that Julia mentioned texture when you're talking about uh, cocktails and wine. Um, and I think that Chablis and particularly B.O. Simon Chablis have a really great texture to them. So what I love most about Chablis with something like Carbonara, where we've got all of this fattiness from the guanciale and from the egg yolks is that acidity that just cuts through everything. Um, you know, it's something that everybody talks about with wine pairing, acidity. You know, it's like adding a little bit of lemon juice to your dish. It just makes everything zip. Um, and so you've got the same thing with Chablis here. But the other nice backbone that you have to B.O. Simon and Samuel B.O. in particular is that sort of waxy, round sort of texture to it that I think works really well with the egg yolks that you've got in this dish. So really delicious. Now, not everybody might have Chablis on hand, so what else can you drink? I think that uh, Prosecco is a great option, easy. Champagne is always a great option to pair. I know uh, I had to pull out <laughs> champagne because Belinda loves her some champagne. So can't have, uh, can't have a discussion with Belinda without champagne. So yep. this is- you can't be my friend. Rob, let's back that up. You can't even be my friend if you don't like champagne. <laughs> champagne. Champagne. You're accepted. Pairs with every single thing. So I think, um, I think my pecorino every will go. Every day with pecorino. Yeah, and uh, Amanda's got pecorino there, which is great. So I think other northern Italian whites and, you know, middle Italian whites, pecorino, gavi, suave, pinot grigio, any of those are going to work really well with this also. And then I think something else that was fun is that uh, when I was talking with Belinda about this, she was to going a totally different direction and she was thinking red wine, which I think probably picks up off the guanciale. So she mentioned one of her favorite producers, uh, Quintarelli here. So this is Amarone. So here we're on the exact opposite side. So I've chosen to pair something unctuous and rich being the Carbonaro with something bright and refreshing and zippy being the Chablis or Champagne or Prosecco. And Belinda goes the other way and likes rich on rich. And so we've got the uh, Quintarelli pairing with that guanciale, a little bit of that smokiness and richness, um, and a really lovely wine. You know I've, I've oh my that. God, Rob, can I, oh my God, that's the bottle. I'm, oh, I'm sad. Linda <laughs> loves herself know, the bottle. Mine was an eight ounce. Well, Linda would only drink that, but that's lack of food. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, guys. Sarah. So I have this saying that pasta waits for no one. So check your pasta. <laughs> if it's feeling like there's a, you know, there's a kind of a in between here of al dente and not. So you got to kind of hit it where um, it still has some. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Are we draining this or are we going to be pulling it out of the water directly? So I always use a pair of tongs, but if you need a colander, go ahead and get a colander ready. Um, but you want to have a measuring cup here to reserve some of that pasta water. So I just kind of dump it right in. I'm looking for about three quarter of a cup or so. You can have a little bit more about, you know, a cup, three quarter cup, a cup. And so this is that guanciale that is um, kind of ground up. And you can use your, if you want to cut some nice squares when you cut your bacon or pancetta, you can use your kind of scrappier end trim pieces um, to, to grind up. Now, this step is where I love to toast the pepper. So, lots of pepper. And carbonara, I first learned how to make this dish in Rome. And they say that, there's a few stories, but that either it was the coal miner's dish, uh, which is what the black pepper represents, the little flecks of coal. But I've also heard that the American soldiers wanted bacon and eggs when they were there during uh, World War II. And so, the Italians came up with this uh, amazing dish using bacon and eggs. 
Um, I love all those fun folklore stories with carbonara because, or just in Italian cuisine in general, um, it makes it fun and that's what I love about Italy and the regional cuisine of that. So you oh, can Sarah, see Sarah, really quick at this point. So your pasta is probably done if you put it yes. in when you put it in. And now we've got like a heated pan and there's like the oil from the guanciale or bacon. And then we yes. put in pepper. Is that where we are? We're with the ground guanciale and the pepper. Uh -huh. And then we're taking out our pasta and we're gonna put it in this pan and we're gonna add a little bit of water and then turn it to low and just kind of reserve. Ready? Pasta in! <laughs> I'm so the pasta's not ready to leave it in the pot because that's where you're gonna put your bowl. Oh God! So this technique is what I call the pasta marriage ceremony. So if we put the spaghetti right in the egg, we might need a little bit more starchiness. So I'm gonna put some of this pasta water and this is this marriage ceremony, which is taking the sauce here, the pasta water, the guanciale, the pepper, and we're gonna make this little bit of a pan sauce here because we need some liquid in our eggs. How are we feeling there? Anyone have any questions? And I'm on low now. I'm just kind of chilling out in this pan. It's not super hot. I have a very small bubble here. Can now everyone see that? Rebecca is on the, on the, she has a few questions. I think we have her unmuted. If Rebecca. Okay. Uh, I, okay, so where are we? Do we put the water in with the eggs or we put some water in with the pasta? A little bit in with the pasta and then we're gonna put some into the eggs now. Okay. And Sarah, right. you leave the pasta, you, you, you keep the water in the pot, right? For the, that pasta was in? Because you're gonna cook over it later or do you drain, do you fully like strain the pasta? No, yeah, that's a great point. That's why I use the tongs because I am gonna use okay. this hot water to make the sauce. Okay. So if you have tongs, I would recommend taking the pasta out and just putting it in the pan or if you already done. Oops, I think we had a freeze for a minute, so. You can just listen to mine sizzling. <laughs> Jamie and Sarah, I think we lost you for just a second, but I do see Megan and Kaho and Rebecca and Bailey and Yui and everybody cooking along and they look okay. <laughs> Is everyone okay? Our That's iPhone there? overheated. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit behind anyway, so the extra seconds are good. All right, we've got you spotlighted. We can continue. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can carry the computer over. Why don't we just do that? Yay. <laughs> and you can set up that. Yay for Zoom life. So I have in here the egg yolks, and Jamie's going to get this. Sarah, are the egg yolks in a separate pan right now, or did you put them in with everything? They're just in a mixing bowl. Okay. Just in a mixing bowl. So you should have your pasta with the guanciale. Um, the ground guanciale, the black pepper, and about a, like a quarter cup of the water. And then you should have a little bit of water left over. Okay, I think Jamie got it set up on my iPhone. Oh, woohoo. I don't know about you, but it smells real good in my place. I right can't now. wait to make it. I'm very excited. I just okay, know so. that my whole entire building can probably smell it. So, yay. <laughs> So in the bowl now, I have my egg yolks and the cheese, and I want to whisk this together, and I'm going to add some of the water. And what you're making here is somewhat like what we call a zabayon. Sarah, we can't, we can't see you. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so you see how my egg yolks look kind of loose and the cheese is all blend blended together? Yeah. Now I'm going to dump my pasta. Set timer for eight minutes. So as soon as you're ready to go and you're going to dump this hot pasta, this is when you want to stir. So I'm going to dump my pasta in. And then we're gonna stir, stir, stir. And that's when I'm gonna keep this right over this water. And you can see it's gonna start becoming a beautiful sauce. 
And this is how you make carbonara. Wow. Wow. So sorry, it looks like, does it look velvety, silky, like uh, like a sabayon, like in consistency? Yes. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. And what's happening here is your cheese is melting, the egg is setting. And I actually think you might want to pour out a little bit of the water so that it, you have a little bit of room for your bowl to nestle in so it doesn't kind of pop up on you. You guys are my neighbor. And be careful, you don't want to burn yourself. So you want to have a towel and just kind of keep stirring. And this is ready. Um, you can cook it as long as you want, as thick as you want. And um, to plate it up, I'm gonna bring it over here to the bowl and give a nice little nest here of some creamy, beautiful carbonara. That well, looks so good. Every little piece of the pasta is kind of dressed with this yummy egg yolk sauce and then add a little bit more grated pecorino cheese some crispy guanciale yes and then a little bit of black pepper edward you're spotlit right now because i know that edward was super excited and he's gonna be communicating with me and he's here from indy making the dish how's it going edward i am thrilled because <laughs> i think i got the um the thickness right on the sauce and you got you the know, texture it up, hold so. it up for us let's see sarah can tell you if you did it right <laughs> on, 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 better angle on this that is I'm a great like, chef oh, oh, that's that's awesome job. <laughs> i'm so, I'm so impressed <laughs> <laughs> well done thank you does anybody right. else have impressive results we want to see them carrie <laughs> levin i mean let's see if that cia <laughs> thing worked out for you <laughs> <Sarah> <laughs> <nailed> <laughs> <laughs> Good job, everyone. So, Sarah, you were saying that when you make carbonara, you have to do the whole process and then eat it right away, right? That's the, the best yes. way. The, the eggs will continue to cook. And so, basically, you just want to keep adding water if the mixture gets too thick. Don't get scared that if it gets thick, you can always fix it by adding a little more water. Um, and then you just want to kind of eat it right away because sometimes it gets a little, you know, clunky. It'll get a little thick and um, you want to eat it right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay! Um, well, I can't wait to make it. It looks great, Sarah. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Sarah, will you also tell us kind of what's going on at the restaurant? You or Rob and like, you know, the kind of the plans and also how we can help and tell us about the new fund that you just started. Sure. So, um, you know, we um, we're blessed enough that we have been able to keep the majority of our team on staff for now. Um, and uh, it really is important to us to find a way to support them. And so um, we have been doing pretty hands on Italian trainings with all the managers. And they, this, is the they thing, Sarah. this is really cool that you're taking advantage of this time to do education. That's so great. Cool. Yeah. So we're doing four regions a week and Groups of two, the managers are getting together and creating Google slide presentations. And then we're also getting some of our friends from the US and from Italy to join in uh, to talk wine and food. And um, it's pretty incredible. Uh, it's been a fun way to break up all of this and find time to do the things that we never really had time to do. Um, and we also created um, a Monteverde Community Relief Fund. Uh, it is a 501c3. Uh, it is in the middle of um, getting the tax exempt. So any donations that you guys feel free to give, but please no, no pressure. Uh, we will uh, send you those tax forms later in the year. It's really cool, Sarah. I mean, I think that there's a billion ways for all of us to try and help, but you know, I, I love to kind of try to make a bigger impact if possible for people that are doing like these really great things you guys have kept your people employed and keep educating them like that's really special and spectacular and important and wonderful and you know we love you guys we love Thank you day, and we love you and we love rob and jamie and the whole team um, there so much so during this Thank time we'll we love support our local restaurants and small businesses so. yeah all over the country check it out and the world
Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what the fund is about, is also for to support all of Chicago and uh, hopefully to have an ability to uh, support all industry workers in the Chicagoland area. I love it. That's so great. fun. So, hey, Jane, also, if anybody has a finished carbonara and they'd like to show it, we would love for you to show it on screen. Kaho, I see you. I see you. Look at that one. Wow, Rebecca has got one done. That looks oh, wow. that great, Rebecca. You guys, I'm so impressed. And also, I noticed that about 80 people downloaded the recipe, so I was really excited to have um, a bunch of people. Gabriel, look at yours, man. Gabriel is like crushing it. I don't know what's going on over and there. Hell, Lowe's looks great. Everyone's doing like Here. a great job. <laughs> Way to go. I mean, I think this is super fun because we get to, I love to cook. I don't know about you, but like cooking sort of makes I'm me feel lighting you, Yeah. Oh, yeah. It makes me feel great. Oh my gosh. Look at that, that one. Kaho's one is killing it. Yeah. That looks amazing. These are like <laughs> These are like, y'all all can come make carbonara at Monteverde when we open back up. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, you're magic. I think we found some new wine cooks for you if you need them. <laughs> so amazing. Anyway, thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. We'll share all those links and the link to donate to her fund and all of that after the show. And I think Amanda... We have segment number three ready to go. Yes, we have it all ready. So we're excited to welcome uh, Jim and Lance from Space 519 and the Lunchroom. Yay! Yay! So they're going to be here today um, to talk about their beautiful decor in their house, um, what they're doing at um, the store and the restaurant right now to support their team. Um, we adore, Linda and I are huge fans. We love hanging out there. We love uh, drinking wine, having lunch, and also shopping. But Lance, give us some, uh, Lance and Jimmy, give us some tips about styling, and we also want to hear about the business and what's going on. Yeah. First up, Jim's going to talk a little bit. I think everyone's kind of interested in looking their best on all of these face talking apps right now. Just give, give some like general advice for, uh, you know, how you can look your best uh, when you're participating like this. For sure. I've had a lot of clients from space who've kind of reached out to me who are now, their entire work moment is in Zoom or in some kind of virtual moment. So, you know, they've been talking a lot about <laughs> I think one of the things that I think is super important is show up ready. Like, spend some time, moisturize. I love the bold lips that are going on today. It's super important. You know, and it doesn't have to be just kind of a, a throwaway. You know, put on something that you love to wear, whether it's like Amanda's amazing on Double J dress today. Like it's just things that really kind of will give you that, that confidence to portray on camera. Um, I think also too, we have to realize that computer cameras are really pretty harsh. So you're kind of, you know, really set up your stage to be flattering, you know? Um, you've got your beautiful dress on, your beautiful, you know, outfit, your strong lip. Key things are your camera level. Like really Jim, Jim, can we also call out Patricia Grunberg, Sarah's mom, with her super fabulous straw hat? I feel like yeah, that's it's Easter. It's like she's really getting not, it. She's getting you know, it. You no, know, it's like if you have a meeting that's pretty important, then show up wearing something that you that's respectful of everyone who's there as well. And I think that's something that's super important. And I think it makes a difference too, like just how you feel, just getting up for the day, like dressing. For those of us that do really have to work from home or have meetings, it's you get you feel a little bit more fresh, which is I mean, I, you know, would have been wearing a t-shirt today. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. It's like today I knew where I was gonna be on. It's like it's Easter. I probably would have worn this outfit, my my blazer, if I was going to brunch. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, great. Really throw everything away. Just Mark, like, can we put up the graphic of some of the things, the images from their store that sort of shows, like, I love to go to Space 519 because it's just always a gorgeous moment. Um, Mark Chi will show us some of the images that we have from, I mean, is it working? Look at that. Like, who doesn't want to be there? I want to be there well, right you. now. <laughs> so do we. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and a lot of the pictures there, Jim and Lance, because I know you both so well, are from your home. So all of your table decor, I mean, you're both so welcoming and gracious and entertaining. Um, and everything, it, it translates through the store and how you take care of everyone, but also how you entertain at home and probably entertaining yourselves together right now. Well, I think one thing that we were thinking about is kind of what Jim just touched on is that, you know, it is nice to get dressed. You know, I think we used to call Sunday Sweatpants Sunday, meaning that it was like the one day of the week that we didn't have to get dressed up and interact with people. And now it's kind of the opposite. But like what Jim touched on, I think it is nice right now to, you know, find things that make you feel good. Um, it doesn't mean it has to be like Downton Abbey, which, you know, we kind of look a little bit like today, but you, um, you don't have to take it to this extreme. It's just, you know, even putting on a piece of jewelry or for guys, you know, getting out of t-shirts and sweatpants, it does make you feel just like a little bit brighter, you know, I think. Sure. And then you guys had some, you know, some sort of tips, five tips for how to, like you said, and Amanda said, we're all in these Zoom meetings and face time type things all the time. You guys had sort of five tips for how to look great for all of us. Perfect. And I think one thing that, that I think looking at all these videos, it's super important is you get some books and get your camera at your eye level or a little bit above. It's like everyone, you know, the shot, there you go, Belinda. It's like the shot from below is, you could be aggressive. So you really want your best angle, you know? The other thing that is super important is lighting. And I just kind of picked up this tip that was super important the other day was put a piece of white paper or a gift box underneath your computer and that whiteness bounces back and it gives you beautiful lighting. That's a good one. That is a good one. I didn't know so, that. Yeah. You know, just a white, you know, coffee table book you have or something, but that light bounces off and it just gives you that really great moment you guys nika's doing it right now she just got herself a white piece of paper to take your <laughs> advice and so did mark g so that's really fun <laughs> i love it you know it's it's super important um the other thing too is like position your lighting so there might be some lighting behind your camera or you know i think everyone looks best when they're really close to natural light as possible i mean belinda of course has her own set, so. yes. like america's next top model <laughs> Tyra. I'm channeling Tyra through the smizing. You're just smizing all, all through brunch. But it's true. It's like, you know, you really have to kind of set up your little station so you look the best, you feel the best. And I think I was just watching something on national news the other day that I thought was so funny. This major doctor was out talking about, you know, what's going on in the world. And they had they were by their window and the siren went by and it drowned him out completely. So close your windows. Maybe put your pets away, you know, things that could disrupt your environment. You really want to keep that kind of control. Oh, these are all great ones. I, I, I mean, I've learned a lot with the, with the paper and the elevation, um, but I sometimes don't think about the sound because, um, you know, we live, I live downtown in the city and we always have a window open or can hear stuff outside, but I'll, I'll try to be more mindful of it. That's a good one. It's funny because those sounds just kind of get out of, out of nowhere. You're like, right. what is going on? You know, it's going to crazy. And then you guys are also going to tell us about how to make sort of your vignette really gorgeous. I mean, I'm looking at the environment that you're in right now and I'm dying because I want everyone to think I live like that. <laughs> so can you share that with us? figuring out like what was the best perspective and to make sure that you're not getting weird light from the windows that are over here. You know, yesterday we did our run through with you and it was dark in here. So we added lights behind us. You know, I think you really have to think of it almost like a set, but it is interesting. I mean, I keep watching on, uh, you know, MSNBC watching these segments and people are in their kitchens and they're like, dirty dishes on their counter and I mean yeah. I guess it's OCD person in me but people are looking and noticing so find that spot and it may not be you know I did do a, well, a segment last week to talk about business and we did it in the den and totally moved the furniture around so that there was a bookcase behind me and it was like a much more dramatic setting which is kind of it's really like like a set for a tv show you want to kind of really manipulate yeah. So you guys had sort of five tips to make this 
sort of background, because I know a lot of people use sort of the virtual background, which is totally cool and super fun. I mean, I did um, an event for the Forbes travel team on Friday, and everybody put on their background pictures of beautiful places that they'd been, and that was really fun. But I think what's sort of neat about this too, like Patricia, I get to see her home, and Rob, I get to see her home, and we get to feel, Julia, I get to see her home, and we get to feel like really connected in that way. I'm also super digging seeing everyone's kids kitchens. So you guys, since you're ultimate sort of stylistas, how do we sort of stage things so it's really beautiful uh, and fun? You want to put eye candy in the shots. I don't know if I was the only one looking at all those beautiful tomatoes on Sarah's counter. And yeah! Like, wow, that looks amazing. But, you know, I think there are putting, it, it's kind of composing interesting things. I see the tulips like on your counter. You know, I, I, again, it's, it's very much like stage directing to try to, um, you know, make yourself look, it's not necessarily, it's kind of what you want to put forward, which is style. Style's not necessarily, you know, uh, what other people dictate. It's your personal style and kind of how you want to represent yourself and put yourself forward. I think that's really great. I mean, listen. I, I'm already your friend. I feel very privileged to be your friend, but I look at this background and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I think something that was really fun that Lance did today was he made these at the table. Like it was, you know, for table for eight. Do you know what I mean? With, even though it's just the two of us. And it's like, you know, he's a, the master at kind of creating these really fun tabletops that are just kind of, you know, over the top and, you know, colorful and emotional and it just, works great with you know the meal that you're serving and their their home really does look like that all the time i i mean i'm lucky that i get to go there and, and be entertained and, and we're friends but um i mean your home is like that but what i love about how they curate um their items is like some things are new some things are from the store some things are uh family heirlooms some things are flea market finds. so you guys have a good uh way of like mixing everything up together so it really works i can look at that table right now and kind of know like where, which is from what? It's just, uh, you have a great Parents background. wearing jewelry, yeah, from the store. Parents wearing jewelry, I mean, come on. It's like, it's Easter. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Easter. Easter. Parents are wearing jewelry, exactly. I love it. But also, how else do we give ourselves some sort of like moment of normalcy? Like, this is so crazy, and none of us ever thought we would be in a situation like this. But I don't know. I feel like we need something to look forward to and something to dress up for right? Because that always gave us joy before and maybe it can continue to give us joy now, no? I think you almost, like even finding settings like this, you can create a restaurant feeling in your house, you know? If you're not able to go out on Friday night to dinner at Monte Verde, you can, you know, make the pasta and at least set the table and if you are, you're, um, you know, use some of your favorite things. And these are kind of just some quick tips we have you know, about just like, you know, not the sweat pants, yoga pants, <laughs> which is easy to get into, but to also find your best things and to use them, whether that's clothing or dishes, you know, and to find inspiration. We've been watching tons of documentaries on Amazon Prime right now about um, fashion designers and fashion people to keep us inspired and interested yes. and to kind of catch up on things, whether it's magazines or websites or friends you know, to find inspiration out there in different places, you know, I think is super important. I love that you said that I'm using all of my expensive glassware right now, because mostly I only have one of each of those. Like when all of you come to my house for dinner or for fun and break all of my glassware, that's the cheap stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. Nice stuff is right here. <laughs> Will you tell us about um, the lunchroom and your fund to help you continue sure. to take care of your staff at the lunchroom? Yeah, so for people that don't know us, we do have, you know, we have a concept store that sells uh, designer women's clothing and home items, apothecary books, but we also have a 40 seat um, sit down restaurant in the center of the store that um, serves breakfast and lunch. Um, we sell and serve wine, obviously, as well. So we have had to furlough all 24 of our employees right now, which is, you know, just a heartbreaking thing um, that, you know, it's super hard, but we really, you know, you see your revenue go to nothing in a business and we had to make that choice. So we do have a great GoFundMe page. You can um, search on GoFundMe, either Space 519 or The Lunchroom, that's going, it's a virtual chip jar where all the funds are going to help our employees. That fund paid for everyone's health insurance, 
for the month of April, which is, you know, one thing that we were able to do for our employees, it's super important. Yeah. So, you know, we're continuing just to kind of push forward and, you know, looking forward to reopening and to having our patio open again this summer and to kind of, you know, we kind of have a real cheers effect in our store where it's a lot of people who come in really regularly, whether it's someone that comes in for breakfast every day or people that just come in for coffee or it's Jim and Amanda in the fitting rooms, you know, That's not to be and try on <laughs> stuff. So we're really excited to get back to, to that point again and are just really pushing forward. Thank you for fighting for that and for taking care of your team and for keeping this place that for a lot of us is so amazing and brings us connection and comfort right. and style. I'm also right. in space fun. Yeah, nice love it. Today. <laughs> and Lance, Lance has done a great job lately also. He's very vocal about small businesses and applying for loans. And Lance, like I really commend you for that, for being vocal about it. So uh, more attention is put to it and you can inspire other people to do the same thing. Yeah. yeah, I really reached out. I've been on NBC News. I was on Fox Business this week talking about, you know, all of the loan prices and don't believe what the government is telling you about how the small business loan program is rolling out so smoothly. It is not. And, you know, there's, it's going to be critical for all of the mom and pop businesses out there. You know, there has mm -hmm. to be some relief or everything's going to kind of just go away, you know, and I think the government gets that. I just don't think they know how to implement it, which is super frustrating. Well, thank you for fighting that fight and also for fighting the fight to make us all look cute. <laughs> we love you guys so much here in Chicago and it's fun because we've got a global community here that we've been building. There are people from France and also from Italy and from all over the country tuning in today. So we just also wanted to share and we want to respect your time because we're at the hour mark that next week we'll be here and i think frankly amanda we might be here every week because this is fun for me and for this everyone something else. to look forward to every sunday but I, what i really love um the most about this is learning you know it's very educational hearing julia talk about mixing cocktails and ice and i mean i've never made carbonara so i'm excited you know i'm glad i got to see it first happen so i'll be able to repeat it um jim and lance always have the greatest tips and the greatest um, items in their stores and i and sarah i saw you write that you can't wait to go to the lunchroom and we're taking you when, um, oh. when the time comes and we're ready to go so um, and they're like every day every meeting i take every meeting there it's so good it's so fun. they have the best baristas too for like a little matcha oat milk latte situation yeah, oat milk situation uh huh. So we have some really fun people joining us next week, and we do this every Sunday. And you know, because I think it's a great thing, and it makes me happy, and I think it makes a lot of other people happy. So Frankie Marshall, if you're here, we'd love to have you say a few words. And Michelle Geyer, who um, I wrote there, I she didn't approve this, but she's kind of like a Susan Lucci kind of situation where she's been nominated for James Beard Awards for Best Pastry Chef, like a billion times and then Darcy and Kate we'd love to unmute you too if you want to say a few words they have a new business um, that I'm obsessed with called happy cabbage and just like how Lance and Jim bring some beauty and style and some things to live for into our lives I think that Darcy and Kate are doing that too so if any of you are here Kate we had you on for a minute but maybe you can tell us about the business and what you're going to share with us next week. Sure. Hi, everyone, and happy Easter. Um, Jim and Lance, I'm the biggest Space 519 fan. My top is from there today. Oh, um, happy Cabbage, like Belinda said, is fresh and a hell of a time to start a business, right? We're only six months old. Mm -hmm. um, but our main goal is really just to help celebrate life's milestones, however big or small. So um, the Beautiful part about all of this is life goes on and you can see a lot of our baby product back here. We celebrate um, new babies, engagements. We did a lot of adult Easter baskets actually um, this last weekend, which was super fun. And um, yeah, so next weekend, we're just gonna talk a little bit about how we put things together and, and how we're continuing to celebrate um, all those moments while we're all staying safe at home. 
I think Kate too, it's about like how we continue to have joy and beauty in our lives in this terrible moment where it seems like it's really hard to do that. So um, Michelle will also be with us. Michelle didn't know, but this is gonna be um, Pancake Week. <laughs> coming up and Michelle was like hey wouldn't it be fun to do savory crepes I originally sort of and you're unmuted Michelle I originally asked her to do, like a souffle because Charlie Trotter's always had this incredible me tag blue cheese souffle which I'm sure was you were responsible for that that I was yeah. really obsessed with but uh so Michelle hi hi how are you hello brunch family how is everyone? What a great session. I mean, I can't wait to make car pasta carbonara. I'm like thrilled. I've been baking in the meantime. I'm making some bars and doing some different things. So it's exciting. Yeah. So Michelle had, had um, those amazing places in Minneapolis, right? Were they all in Minneapolis, Michelle? That's right. Minneapolis and St. Paul. I had a cafe in St. Paul. Yeah, I mean, incredible, like baked goods, incredible, just brunch moments and breakfast moments and all that kind of stuff. So she's arguably, um, you know, Joseph is on here. He can disagree with me maybe if he wants, like one of the greatest pastry chefs that this country has ever produced. I mean, I used to work next to her every day. And even though I was getting yelled at to like come be near her. <laughs> She's laughing. Always um, being yelled at. I was always being yelled at. Everyone in the kitchen at Charlie Trotters knows that I was always being yelled at. I was that one. I was I was that employee. But anyway, we're so excited to see you here next week. And then Margaret, where are you? Margaret is um, the specialist that we spoke with for people who were here a little early today. And she has an amazing place called um, Thatu. Um, and Margaret, if you are here... I told her that I'm obsessed with this little lacy, doily pancake situation that I had with Kushbu Shaw when we came to see you. Kushbu's the restaurant editor from Food & Wine Magazine. And I want you to, to teach us how to make that. Yes, that is the opum. It's a little rice cake, a fluffy rice crepe. So yeah, going south to South India. Th thank you for such an amazing brunch time. This has been like amazing. Was it fun? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know it's fun. we learn a lot. We get to see each other. So, yeah. So, I love all of you. That's all we have programmed for today. Um, it's a little after three. So, thanks for hanging out. I will tell you also that there is an after party. I mean, we don't generally close this thing down. And also, if you completed your bingo card, I mean, I guess this is the thing that. <laughs> the bingo card so you know post that on your instagram with as much as you completed and all of your bingos and i will send you a little prize because you know bingo right i mean virtual bingo i guess is even bigger than maybe virtual brunch or virtual happy hour <laughs> so i was happy to play that game with you today so we're gonna keep hanging out and drinking and we're gonna unmute all so that everybody can share and connect but if you have to go and you're through with us that's fine too um amanda for you and and I and for all of our guests we love you thanks for spending Easter brunch with us and making the day a little brighter and also for helping um, all of these people these are our friends who have served us for so long and made our days better for so long and we want to find ways to help them now too so cheers cheers, cheers. Thank you, everyone. cheers. cheers. Thanks. Thanks.